Hello and welcome to my uh, continuing series of best golf tips of all time. Today is from Alex Hay from 1957. And what Alex was talking about was aiming, misaligning, setting up to the golf ball correctly. He uh, noted that the general population of, of golfers always line themselves up first and then the golf club where he's suggesting and I believe rightfully so that we should be lining the club face up first starting with the leading edge. We should always know where the leading edge of the golf club is and we should start by lining the leading edge up to where we want to go first. Okay, that said, that's not really the lesson I want to give. Um, the lesson I want to give is something that I learned way back when that I was totally unaware of and I think you will be too. I hope you're not, but I, I think you will be. Here's what I know. Aiming is not very hard to do. Anybody can aim. I mean, how far off? If you've never hit a golf ball before and you don't perceive it's going to curve wildly, then how hard would it be to kind of be pretty good at it right away? What happens with aiming is, as you start hitting more and more bad shots, if you're a slicer of the golf ball, you start aiming further left. So your aim, really, when you first start, your aim is probably pretty good. It's after you start hitting a bunch of really bad shots that you start anticipating what your miss is going to be and start aiming for it. However, let's kind of see if we can move past that. Again, I state that aiming, I don't think, is the hard part. Making the golf ball go on the straight line towards your target seems to be. So, we could all stand here and, and, and learn to get the club face and aim it correctly, but I'm not suggesting for a second that's going to make a golf ball go where you want it to do. Want, want it to. No, I, here's what I think. Somewhere along the line, you've got to make a move. And the motion you make dictates what the ball is going to do. Here's what I know. I want to give you a, an anatomy lesson here. I'll back up and then I'll give you the anatomy lesson. If I can get the shaft of the golf club to travel on the line that I want it to, then the golf ball is going to fly fairly straight. If I'm not cutting across the golf ball, if I'm not swinging way inside out, the ball's going to go pretty straight. Here's what I know. The club shaft, my arms, follow the line of my shoulders. I don't stand over a golf ball and then decide to swing straight or whatever you've been told to do. I don't do that. I swing on the line that I supposed to swing on. If my alignments are out of whack, now let me give you a definition of alignments. <laughs> my alignments, my definition are, is my thighs, my hips, and my shoulders. In my definition, my feet have nothing to do with anything. Way too many golfers rely that they've got their feet straight so there everything else is, is, is correct. But, but here's the flaw in that. When a right-handed player puts their right hand lower than their left, their shoulder line always goes to the left. It's just an anatomy lesson. It's what happens. And if you're left-handed, it's the opposite. The shoulders all go to the right. So years ago, I invented my little thing called the magic triangle because Tom Tomasello gave me the lesson I'm giving you now. And I was totally oblivious. I thought it was all about setting up to the golf ball and then just making the swing that you want. Something really wrong with that, right? I should have known there's something really wrong with that. I mean, well, it just it seems to make sense that, you know, you and I are just standing here, everything's fine. But we get cockeyed as soon as we put one hand. You know, and the thing about when your right hand goes lower than your left, the shoulders always go left. You don't just go like this. You go. So now, here's the straight line that I'm asking for. Here's what I want for my thighs, my hips, and my shoulders, this line. But you can see, as soon as I go like that, I just went way the heck over there. Well, that's the line my club's most likely to swing on. What I have to do is re-square it up. Here's, here, again, here's what I'm saying. Because I know that every time I put my right hand lower than my left, my shoulders go to the left, then I have to make the adjustment. I have to make the adjustment. Now this is what allows my club shaft to go back, you know, a little to the inside, a little towards out impact, and then inside again a little. So the tip may have been about lining your club face up, but I would suggest to you that that's not very hard to do. 
The trick is to be able to swing in such a way that the ball goes where you want it to. If your alignments are out of whack, and again, I will state again, my feet have nothing to do with anything. My feet could be doing there. And I'm lined up square to my target. I don't care where your feet are going. My shoulders, my hips, and my thighs really need to be in position because my arms follow my shoulders. If my shoulders get this way, the club goes way the heck out here and I got to do something. If my shoulders get back into line, then the club can swing on the path that I want it to swing on. Reason for the lesson, I guess, and, and the reason I made this was because up until Tom Tomasello gave me that lesson, I, like everyone else, parallel to the target. Well, my feet were parallel to the target, but my shoulders were way the heck over there. Didn't get it until it was told to me. And I'm going, wow, no kidding. I'm way out. Okay, so the tip is easy as far as aiming. I don't think it's a big, big deal. Swinging on a line that makes the ball go where you want it to is what we're trying to do. So the alignments are your thighs, your hips, and your shoulders. Make sure that they're square. If I want to hit a fade, I move my stance line to the left. I take my squared stance and move it to the left. I do not buy into open your stance. Don't buy into that terminology. If I want to hit a draw, I take my squared stance and I turn it to the right. Again, I don't buy into the terminology close your stance. You've got to be careful. You've got to realize that you're not fused. Thank God you're not fused. Life would be a lot tougher than it is if you were fused. We can move several different ways so it allows us to do what we can do. You've got to pay attention to this. Squared stance. You want to hit a fade, I can take my squared stance and turn it to the left, creating a swing path that goes more outside the line and inside the line. If I want to hit a draw, I take my squared stance and I turn it to the right, which allows my arm path to come more from the inside to inside, causing the draw. I hope you, 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 you kind of get a glimpse there of, you know what, everything, I'm, the more I do these, the more it's, you are failing because of misunderstandings, misinterpretations, or the person giving you the information only gave you a piece of it. They didn't give you the total of it. I, I kind of just hope by, the total isn't that hard. The total's not, you know, not any harder than, than, than the pieces that are incorrect. As a matter of fact, it's easier. I hope you enjoy that and you keep, come, keep coming back because you are going to find out that this really does fit together way better than time. Close your stance, open your stance. All, all that sort of stuff. Hope you enjoyed.